Listen, I don't know how the second half of this arc is going to top the first half of this arc. Sanji and Luffy, Sanji's family sucking. So we're gonna continue Whole Cake Island. Let's talk about One Piece. Okay, listen, if you know anything, if you watched my last video, Sanji family sucks. I said it in the intro. I'm gonna say it as much as I can because I think what this arc is doing is really showing what Sanji, how different he is from his family. But his sister, she switched out the handcuffs. The handcuffs that were to Sanji's arms that they said, you know, your hands are going to explode. They're not. And we have seen, like, she's always been the one that Sanji was growing up and, and she kind of had his back, but I don't know, I wasn't expecting that from her. Another thing I was not expecting, his mother drank poison to counteract what his father was doing to make them emotionless. And that is why Sanji is the way he is. Come, come on. The only little bit we've seen of his mother was she ate the food, and this is gonna come into play here in a minute, and it, the callback, Oda, the callback that you do with her food. It's good stuff. Oh! It gets you, like, right here in the heart. So we have seen Sanji's mother here and there, but we learn her backstory and how she didn't want her children to be emotionless. And that's why Sanji is the way he is. It's because she drank some stuff to counteract what he was, his father was doing to him and his brothers inside the wound and... That is why she didn't make it. And Sanji has to grapple with that. And imagine having to grapple with... And his sister is actually the one that's like, don't do that to yourself. It's not your fault. And it's not really his fault. Obviously, it's his father's fault. Because he sucks. I don't know if you know that or not. But obviously, you would imagine as a child having to bear in your mind the responsibility of... Your mother no longer being here. What they are putting Sanji through in this arc is incredible as a reader, but heartbreaking as a reader. And if you want to go by heartbreaking, as a reader, Luffy finds out that Sanji knows that pudding also equally sucks. He goes back to the spot and Sanji stumbles across him and Luffy looks shriveled up. Sanji had brought him food, and this is the callback that I was talking about. It's incredible. It is incredible. It fell, it got rained on, it looks like a pile of mush, and Luffy loves it. Because again, and he held so strong to this, I'm not eating anyone's food if it's not Sanji's food. And if you remember the scene a volume ago, or two volumes ago, that's how Sanji's mother ate the food, because some things happened, and she says, oh, she loved it, and it looks disgusting to everyone else. And Sanji breaks down. Oh! What Oda is doing with Sanji's character is... I can completely understand where you're coming from, because I felt the same way. I did always kind of like Sanji. There was something about him that I liked. But he can be cringy, and he sucks. But I don't think... If you've been on this journey with the Straw Hats, how can you not love his character after this? After everything he's been through. Oh, don't even get me started on the conversation he has with all the Straw Hats and him and Luffy have this conversation. Oh. <sighs> Let's go. Let's talk about it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Actually, wait, before we talk about the conversation with Sanji and everyone from the Straw Hats, a really funny moment happened. So Jinbei, Carrot, Nami, Chopper are in the mirror world and trying to save Brooke from Big Mom, <laughs> who is like, she's asleep and she's like kind of cuddling with him. It's odd. It's odd. I'll give you that. And in this chapter, they do multiple attempts and fail miserably. Like, Big Mom will turn over. The whole bed will get crushed. <laughs> and what they have done is, like, crafted another brook to, like, switch places with them. Oh. Uh, it was really needed to have a funny moment when Sanji and Luffy were going through 
so much that's been dramatic because if you really think about it, a lot of this arc has been such good character development for Sanji. It's nice to have like this really funny moment. It's so like a temp one, Chopper fails miserably, Carrot then fails, Nami fails, Jimbei, she, there's a big explosion. They finally get Brooke out. He actually got the pawn glyph. So now everyone is back together in Mirror World. And they actually find one of the shards that Luffy broke earlier. Uh, where they're at. Where Luffy and Sanji are at right now. To be able to talk to them. And then this, this is right after Luffy and Sanji have one of the best conversations those characters have had. So Luffy and Sanji meet up in the place that Luffy said he was not leaving. And Sanji tells him to kind of, you know, go get out of here. I have to, the, they have the Barati. They have my actual father that I grew up with. I can't win. It's a losing battle. My family is evil. I deserve to suffer the same fate as my family. There's nothing I can do. I'm just trying to save the Straw Hats, my actual family, and then my actual, actual family with the Barati. And this is where Luffy shines. Anytime one of his crew is going through something, this is where he shines. He looks at him and he says, he hits him directly in the face. <laughs> directly in the face. Basically to tell him, you're crazy. If that's what we gotta do, okay, we'll go defeat Big Mom. We'll go stop this wedding, like assassination thing that he's got going. You're coming back to the ship. I'm not leaving without you. Sanji goes like, Nami will never forgive me for any of this, the stuff that I put you guys through. Like no one, he feels like because he made this one error in judgment. And in my opinion, it wasn't really an error in judgment. He did what he thought was best to save the person that brought him up and made him have a life outside of his family that sucks. That's not a bad thing to put his life on the line to try to get his actual father to safety. But what he forgets, the Straw Hats are a family. They're going to go defeat Big Mom. And another really good moment after all this serious conversation with Chopper, Jimbei, and all of them get a hold of them. Sanji has a conversation with Nami and she goes, I'll never forgive you for what you did. And you see like it goes directly into his heart but we're not leaving without you. And he does the hard eyes again. Listen, I have, I have talked my mess about the hard eyes. It was good to see him back. <laughs> it was good to see him back. He deserves it after everything that he's been going through. And then the end of volume 85 had one of the craziest team ups. <sighs> There's no way you saw this coming. I did not see this coming. Enemy of my enemy is my friend or my ally. Friend is definitely not the right word for this. Luffy and Capone team up. Oh, so they're all trying to decide how to attack Big Mom. And Jinbei actually goes up and says, well, we, we say Perkins was saved. We found out Beige Capone's plan. Because again, earlier we thought Beige had teamed up with Big Mom. Come to find out he had found, there's a lot of double crossing going on. But all Jinbei asked Luffy wants a meeting with you. Go hear him out and see if you can team up with him. And everyone thought Luffy would be like, no, no. But for Luffy to be Luffy, he actually said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go hear him out. We'll team up. If he's, you know, if he says the right things, if not, I'll just punch him. <laughs> so he goes and has a meeting with Capone. But before that, Capone's wife, who looks a lot like Lola, actually goes into a little bit of her backstory. And it is sad. She looks a lot like Lola and Big Mom took it out on her because she was mad Lola messed up something with the Giants. Big Mom also, so I'm going to be honest with you. And this is my honest opinion. Honestly, come closer. If Big Mom and um, Judge Vin Smoke didn't make it out of this, I would be sad. <laughs> Man, wouldn't hurt my feelings in the least. Those two are the, the root of the problem. How she, like, did a lot of crappy things to her because she looked like Lola who messed up the thing for the job. Which, hold on, I'm going to call this, right? I don't know nothing about this. The final chapter of Volume 85, we haven't gone much further. So this is 
a guess. This is a theory that I have. Theory time. I think this means Capone is kind of a good person. Hear me out. I know, like, he's kind of after Al Capone. He's kind of a mob boss. They even go through, like, he would watch animals. He would hurt animals and then watch them suffer. He's all about that. I think he has a soft spot. And I think we will find that out maybe next volume, volume after that. Throughout this arc, we will find out that he has a very soft spot. But I don't know. It's just a theory. Don't hold me to it. So after a quick shower scene, um, boy, Oda, um, man, uh, anyway, Luffy and the rest of the Straw Hats meet up with Capone and gangster like Gaston or something. And he's like, no, like Luffy is like, stay like Paige telling him everything. Right. And Luffy is staring at this person. He's like, you're Caesar. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's Caesar. 100%. Also, Luffy looks great in a suit. Like, they all look very dapper. It's, it's a great look for the Straw Hats. They should wear more suits. But yes, after they lay everything on the table and his kind of plan to get Big Mom, Luffy and Capone join forces with Caesar. And, or I'm sorry, Gangsta Gaston. Apologize. Not. It's Caesar. <laughs> but yeah, that is a team up I never would have thought of. Again, I have been loving this whole Cake Island arc so much. I thought this second half of this arc has a lot to live up to. And if the rest of the volume 85 is any inkling of what we are in store for, <sighs> Wrap in, buckle up. <laughs> Let's get on to volume 86. So this volume, volume 86, is all about the weather. And shocker, it, it doesn't go as planned. <laughs> I did like it when Luffy jumped out of the cake. He's like, so they're making this plan. That's when we left him in volume 85. And they were talking about they had to grab Lady Carmel's photo. And it kind of puts Big Mom, and she's able to get injured. Because she is so trapped in her own thoughts. And we actually get a little bit of a backstory. And we realize what thoughts she's trapped in. And then Luffy's like, no, I got I got an idea. It's going to be hilarious. And Beige is like, hey, it's not about being funny. We have to make this happen. He's like, no, no, I got it. I got it. He's jumping out of a cake. A lot of Luffy jumping out of a cake. Because he actually gets Burrell. Burl? Burrell? Brulee. No, he, yeah, one of the comp. Brulee. It's Brulee. Thanks for continuing to watch the videos, even though I cannot pronounce any names hardly ever. But she can make other people the straw hat. She did it in the forest and use it in a bunch of Luffy's jump out of the cake. And he's like eating the cake. Oh, and one of the funny parts. So when he jumps out and distracts him, Bage's like, he, he's not going to tell him exactly which one he is. <laughs> and Big Mom asks, you know, which one is the real straw hat? And he's like, it's me. But to kind of back up, all the guests are arriving. I really enjoyed the setup for this plan because it was like everyone had to be in place. Caesar or uh, Gas Gastino <laughs> had to like bring in the mirror for all of them to escape and everyone's kind of getting into place and Beige checks because they're inside of him. You know, Straw Hats, are you in place? They're sleeping. Jimbei's there though because he's finally made the decision. Oh! Man! Okay, sorry to kind of jump around. But Jimbei, when him and Big Mom have the conversation, when he kind of defends them and chooses life or death, oh, chills, man. That panel and that scene, when he chooses life instead of stay, and she doesn't take any life from him, if I'm going to be part of the crew of the King of the Pirates, I'm not going to fear no emperor. You're nothing. Oh, and she doesn't suck any life from him. Just standing there, not scared in the least. Jimbei! Sir. Great. I'm so glad you're finally officially part of the Straw Hats. And Luffy's excited too. Like, oh. That was incredible. So Jimbei is looking over the Straw Hats that are inside base. He's like, I'll wake them 10 minutes before. Obviously. Uh, Luffy doesn't want to wake up. And they use meat to wake him up. And they're about to be late to start the plan. 
But I will tell you something I did not see coming. Putting in Sanji. So, obviously, the plan was for Pudding to, you know, shoot Sanji when they say their vows. But Oda actually made Pudding's character a little bit more sympathetic. She still, like, kind of sucks because she wants to do all this. But we find out through a quick panel, people made fun of her eyes. Her third eye, specifically. But Sanji said, oh, you have a beautiful third eye. She's like, yes, get a glimpse of my third eye. Scream in terror, and then I'm going to take you out. But he does the opposite. She drops to her knees. One of Big Mom's son, Katakuri, I think? He's pretty cool because he can see a little bit into the future. Just like a little bit, not a lot, just like a few seconds into the future. And she sees Pudding drop to her knees. And he's like, what's going on? Paige gets a glimpse of this. He's like, oh, he knows. He seems like bad news. <laughs> like, he seems like he knows how to handle himself. He's actually kind of like, out of all of the children of Big Mom that we've met so far, he definitely 100% in my opinion, it seems the most interesting. And so now it is popped off. It is happening. The gunshot goes off. Even though I actually think, here's a theory, I think Pudding doesn't want to do it anymore. It's not really a theory. She pretty much says it, but she does it anyway. So everyone is on go. Luffy is through the cake, and they're all trying to get to this picture and damage this picture to damage Big Mom to shoot her with a rocket launcher. But everyone is having trouble getting to this picture. And then like this, <laughs> this straw doll of Luffy breaks the picture. It's Brooke. What? <laughs> and she has thought Brooke was dead because she found like the little substitute. And he's like, I've been dead. He likes uh, I'm dead puns. That's just that's his thing. And he enjoys doing it. And I enjoy when he does it. But what has happened is there's so much going on. Big Mom doesn't let out the paralyzing scream that, you know, the crew is going to use, <laughs> there's a weird name for it. It's earplugs. It's, it's, they're going to use earplugs to block out the paralyzing scream, thus being able to defeat Big Mom. So while everyone is kind of struggling to get her to see the picture again, something very interesting happens with Sanji and Pudding. And this is, I don't know, I, I might be changing my tune a little bit. Sanji basically tells Pudding that she is only fooling herself she wants to believe that she is this evil person and being able to do all these things i think again just the theory could be completely wrong this plays into sanji fooling himself with the luffy fight now he is basically telling pudding the same thing like you think you're this evil person there's some good in him it it helps sanji that she is he is very attracted to him. and he has the hard eyes and, and even up until this point, he's like, remember the plan. Remember the plan. Don't mess this up. Remember the plan. But I don't think this is the last we are going to see of this relationship. I really don't. I bet this relationship goes further than even this wedding. That obviously is not taking place now because, you know, because everyone is fighting. So the wedding is officially ruined. Now can they defeat Big Mom is the question. Big Mom finally lets out the paralyzing scream. Everyone is paralyzed. But here's an interesting thing, see? So you would think that they shoot the rockets, but the plan is full of success. Not the case. We get a little bit of Big Mom's backstory, and it's kind of heartbreaking. So I'm pretty sure she is from Ephilim, I think the name, it's Giants. And I think it's those two Giants, you remember a long time ago? There's two callbacks that I actually want your guys' help with it. The Giants that were fighting for hundreds of years and I cannot remember the name for the life of me. But I think she's from that town. Also, the House of Lambs, where she is, because she is brought in by Mother Carmel. We'll, we'll talk about her in a minute. But some of the kids in the orphanage, like the Scar, is that Moria from Thriller Bark? It is. Like, did they say that in Thriller Bark or did I just forget? Like, because, hey, listen, I don't know if you know this. Um, I'm reading One Piece pretty fast. Which is awesome, because, like, I really am enjoying it, but also bad in the sense of trying to remember every every little detail. So that's why, like I've said in multiple videos, the fun part about One Piece is reading One Piece and then, you know, rereading One Piece. So Big Mom gets hungry and wipes out the entire giant town and takes out one of the captains and basically Mother Carmel, you think, is being very, like... I'm going to take her with me. She's just a child. So she leaves the town, goes, sets up the orphanage somewhere else. But then we immediately find out she's not that nice. She sells kids. Big mom, I'm going to be honest with you. I know you love her, but 
She sells kids. <laughs> that was a turn. She was like, looked so nice. You're thinking she's doing all this for the children? Selling them for money. I didn't see it coming. Either. Man. <laughs> but while Big Mom is going down a trip down memory lane, she finally snaps out of it just in time for when the rockets hit her. The plan fails. And then everyone doesn't know what to do. So Caesar, or Gastano, brings in the mirror. She breaks the mirror with her voice. Everyone is trapped in the wedding. Beige goes full Rook style and makes this like giant castle and everyone is inside of there. And he lets them know, if the castle falls, he dies. Here's the thing that I really want to talk about in this whole volume. Let's talk about Beige. Here's, I, okay. He comes off as like the Al Capone, you know, that's who he's based off of. And you're thinking like he's going to double cross him at any moment in this plan. At least that's what I was thinking. He's putting his life on the line to protect everybody that's part of his alliance. And even he said, it, you know, like once we escape, hey, it, alliance over. But it really shows his character that he is willing to. I mean, obviously there is some self-preservation because he wants to survive, but he doesn't double cross anybody. And I actually really respect that about him. As a person that could come off or a character that looks and is designed like kind of a gangster and you're thinking he's only out for himself. I think this is really showing that he does have, regardless of how piratey and sideways his moral compass is, he has a moral compass. He knows what his line is. And if they're part of his alliance, he's willing to sacrifice himself to protect everyone or let them get time to think of another plan to how to escape and i just really wanted to like talk about that or at least say that in this video because i feel like i have not given enough respect to him and he really 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 earned my respect in this volume and that is how we leave volume 86 we have everyone inside of beige in castle form big mom is mad and attacking everybody the plan has failed it went horribly wrong and also one last thing germa 66 they get their suits are they a callback to power rangers like because they talk about sparkling red and green and all um are they still are they they morph in time <laughs> like i looked at i was like that's pretty cool if it is a call to power rangers that's oda right there that's my childhood but yeah let me know in the comments are they a callback to power rangers because it really felt like so now in volume 87, because that is the last volume you guys told me to read for this section of the video, are we finally going to get Luffy versus Big Mom? Because that's the thing that has happened. All this plan and this sneaking to get Sanji out and stop this massacre at this wedding. Uh, I am ready for Luffy to fight Big Mom so much. And I know this arc still has a good few chapters left, but is the next volume where they actually go at each other because she seems very powerful and Luffy is Luffy. So it could be better than Doflamingo. And I loved, that's probably, besides the emotional Sanji Usopp fights, like fight fights, Doflamingo is up there. So if you're telling me the big mom fight could be better than Doflamingo, I am ready for volume 87. So everyone is still trying to figure out how to leave Big Mom's wedding. Like, <laughs> they are trapped. And actually, Sanji has a really good moment when his, with his father because he says, you are not my father. When he tells Judge Vin Smoke that, I'll be honest with you, there was a lot of satisfaction there. Because he's not. I always like when stories do that. When they are like, just because they are blood related. It's the people that raised you and the people that imprinted stuff on you that dictates what you consider fame. And that is really personified with Sanji and his actual dad. If you don't remember from the last video, his family sucks. Well, they do go and make amends. And by amends, I actually mean they leave Beige's castle form to hold off Big Mom so everyone can escape. And Luffy's like, I, I want to go out too. And they're like, no, we... They're making amends. It's their way of making amends. And Sanji tells him, don't go out. But... Sanji's sister, Riju, gets in trouble, and they both come out. That is a great scene, because in the paneling, they say, like, Sanji says his attack, and Luffy says his attack, and they both jut out. <laughs> and then they have a funny moment of Sanji looks at him, 
And Luffy's like, well, I thought you were going out. And Sanji's like, no, I'm going out to protect her. Man, what are, what are we both doing out here? And while everyone's out kind of distracting Big Mom, Paige says, hey, Caesar, fly me over. Like, fly me out of here and you can get your heart back. And he actually finally gets his heart back. Caesar, you did it, man. <laughs> I don't know if this is the last we've seen of Caesar. I have a feeling he's going to be around again. I don't know. This is a theory. A theory. But I don't think that's the last we've seen of Caesar. Also, we finally get to see Luffy hit Big Mom. And Sanji immediately drags him out of there because it's crazy to attack her and they have to escape. But we get to see it. Listen, I'm always excited for Luffy to fight the big bad in these things. I don't know if Luffy can handle Big Mom right now. I know he can. He's the hero of the story. And I'm sure, listen, I'm sure they have framed her as a problem, like a big problem. And that's what we're going to get to because someone lies and says they to have her wedding cake. So the tamale? Is that tamale? Tamale? Think it's tamale? It would make sense. A lot of food things. That explodes, and her castle actually falls to the ground, but gets turned into cake. So everyone kind of survives, but... And they even say this. The Big Mom Pirates, like, kind of base is destroyed and gives enough distraction for the Straw Hats and Beige and all of them to get distance from Big Mom. It's actually really funny because Beige turns into a tank and it's a very like Looney Tunes moment. He, <laughs> like Wiley e. Coyote, you guys remember Wiley e. Coyote and the Road Runner? He nails a sign down that says like Straw Hats this way. <laughs> so everyone is kind of going their separate ways because Beige, as much as I hate to admit it, Beige held up his end of the bargain. He's actually honorable, and that actually plays into Chef on his wife actually jumps out of him and goes with Pudding to build a cake later on in this volume. And it shows, though, because she even has this big speech. It's super well done. He is really about, like, honor. He has a lot of honor for, like, someone that is modeled after a gangster. And it's really well done in this volume. So they have lied to Big Mom and says, actually, because she is very mad now that she has got out of the trance of Mother Carmel. And she's like, my wedding cake. I wanted it so much. And they have told him the Straw Hats have the wedding cake. They've, they've escaped and ruined your plans. And they have your wedding cake. And boy, is she mad. Is she very mad. And she catches up with them in the seducing woods. And they kind of start having this fight. And Nami actually has a moment. So her cloud Zeus really likes... Nami's like black ball lightning thing. And he bites down on it. I mean, Oda's art is always good, but this lightning strike is so impressive. It is so well drawn. And Pudding's coming back around. Well, half of Pudding. She kind of flashes back and forth. It's super funny moments because after Chef Ranchi, Pudding asks her to make the cake because they're like, it's the only thing that can stop Big Mom and hopefully she doesn't kill the, the man that I love. Which is Sanji. Well, that's half of what she thinks. And the other half is like, no, let him let him go. I hate him. She's a very funny character, but I think she really does care for Sanji. But during all this, like, Big Mom and all of them are closing in because this, this whole volume, and honestly, this part of this arc, and we'll get more to it on my final thoughts. Like I said, there's always timestamps. You can jump around. But my final thoughts on this whole, like, part of this arc that I'm reviewing because it's going to be in three different parts or three different videos. But while Big Mom and all of them are kind of surrounding and it looks like the Straw Hats have no way to escape, Pedro sacrifices himself and takes out like Pesperoni? Pes Pesperoni? It's the candy man that can do everything in candy. He actually, his sacrifice was in vain. Uh, but Pedro, when he did the sacrifice... He's kind of been a bit character throughout this. We, we've honestly gotten to know him a little bit because he chose for Big Mom to take his life. And I feel like he went on this journey. He says it multiple times, knowing that he wasn't going to make it out. He has basically things strapped to him that makes a big explosion. And he gives the Straw Hats enough time to escape or to put some distance between Big Mom as we find out sacrifice was kind of in vain but that was one of the coolest moments in this part of this arc was his sacrifice and him talking about the importance that having the straw hats journey not end here and continue going because he truthfully believed and 
Like we all know. What the Straw Hats are doing out there in the world of One Piece is very important and is going to usher in the new age. I'm 100% gone. Listen, if we've been reading One Piece and it doesn't end with them starting the new age and becoming king of the pirates, what are we doing? Let's hear something. We know. We know Luffy's going to be king of the pirates. Come on. But it's really cool to see a character that's not really one of the Straw Hats acknowledge them and acknowledge that the crew that we're following is so important to not just the story we're reading, but the world of One Piece in general. And it was a very well done sacrifice. And with the crew escaping from Big Mom, Luffy actually takes Kakaguri through the mirror world. And he looks at everybody and says, hold it down while I'm gone. I'll be back. Listen, I'm going to get to the final thoughts literally in probably about 30 seconds, but hear me out. Whatever I felt about this part of this arc, the Kakaguri and Luffy fight, the Mochi and the Gum Gum, because their powers are so similar. <sighs> I am so excited to see them because Luffy shatters the exit. And now they're in Mirror World together. No holds bar. It's about to go. Man. People. This is going to be good. So where we leave the Straw Hats, Luffy is fighting Kaguri where he shattered the exit. He's in Mirror World. Sanji, Pudding, and Chefron, Chefron, are going to the island to get the ingredients and bake the cake to stop Big Mom's hunger pain. Big Mom is on the tail of the other Straw Hats. Pedro has sacrificed himself. What are my thoughts on this part? If you've watched this video, because we're, we're towards the end of the video, I, you know, I'll say it early, but... Thanks for always supporting these One Piece videos because honestly I'm 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 gonna be honest with you. If you could not tell through this video <sighs> Let's talk. I don't know if it was the first part of Whole Cake Island, the, the last video that I did that set this up. I was loving this arc. It had some of my favorite moments, the Sanji stuff, but it just felt like one big middle set. And not in a middle section where there was a lot of parts that the Straw Hats were, like, cornered, right? Like, the, the castle with Beige and the ships where Pedro sacrificed himself. So there were a lot, because, you know, the, the classic middle part is the dark chapter. Even how I've been breaking these volumes up and this chapters up in all these videos, there always seems to be some sort of part of a resolution, right? There, there's some things that have been answered and... and and this and that, even in each video. But what it felt like to me was the beginning part was setting up the emotional backstories and kind of the whole cake island, which I loved. I loved it. This really felt like we were living in whole cake island. And I think it's because it was still set up. And Luffy really never, he came face to face with Big Mom but it would have been nice to have the Kakaguri fight in this part of this kind of the way I'm reading One Piece. Because now we have two more volumes of Whole Cake Island. Uh, actually, let me know in the comments down below what chapter to stop at for the finale of Whole Cake Island. And then we go to Wano. And <sighs> You guys seem to be hyped about Wano. I guess something happens in Wano. I don't, I don't know. Again, don't know anything about it. While One Piece is still one of the only things I think about on a daily basis, and I love these characters, for these run of chapters, because this is how this thing works. This is the only reason that I enjoy doing it, is because I want to be honest, and my honest experience of going through One Piece. I never really want to, like, put on a show for the camera, right? I don't know, it's just... It's not something I want to do. I felt like this section of Whole Cake Island was lackluster for me. I really enjoyed like the wedding scene and them all setting that stuff up and Sanji's turn while he compliments Pudding and, and that stuff was fun and the beige stuff was okay. But it just felt like everyone was running the entire time and trying to escape. Here's the thing about the Straw Hats. We hardly see them run ever away from any problem. 
I was kind of ready. And th and that's what I actually really loved about Luffy because Luffy was feeling the way I was feeling of, he wants to fight, let's go. Let's do this. And everyone was kind of telling him, our, our plan, we, we did this. Like, and they even said, like, we didn't bring Zoro and them. <laughs> but I definitely felt like Luffy of like, just hit him. Just fight. Let's do it, man. It's not like I didn't like it. It's One Piece. Update. I always love One Piece. <laughs> like, there's really nothing One Piece cannot do that I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm still in, boys. I'm still Straw Hat. Luffy's my captain. Let's do it. I'm selling the seas. But actually, maybe you can help me down in the comments below because it's hard for me to, to put it into words. I've, I've thought about this. I've thought about how I was going to write these final thoughts in this closing bit. Because I don't want to be a downer and I don't want to be like, oh, uh, it was bad. Because I don't think... One Piece is so good, even its bad stuff is still better than, than half the stuff I read all the time anyway. So it's not that it was bad, but they're... It just seemed like perfect example. We're in a food centric thing. They're they're making. It felt like it was missing an ingredient for this middle part to to kind of be fulfilling, to fill to fill me up like Big Mom and not be in a hunger rage. And I'm I feel like I'm in a hunger rage, but I feel like I'm about to be overfilled with the end of the Whole Cake Island arc. <sighs> Luffy and Kakaguri that fight. And then you got Big Mom. He's still got to handle Big Mom. I feel like we had the entree in the first part. This was the appetizer. And now dessert. It's about to be nothing but a treat from here on out. You see what I did there? The whole cake island with the, with the cake and the dessert. I'm, I'm trying. Listen. Not all the jokes are going to hit. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm trying. But yes, that is it for this One Piece video. On to volume 88. But like I said... As always, if you've made it to the end of this video and you really enjoy my experience through One Piece, I really appreciate you guys so much. You're amazing. You're the opposite of Sanji's family, which suck. <laughs> You're the opposite of suck. But yes, as always, thank you for watching and comment down below what is the final chapter of the Whole Cake Island arc and what is the chapter I should stop for our final video of this arc and then on to Wano. Me trying to avoid spoilers for Wano have been some of the hardest experience since I started reading One Piece. Send all the good vibes that I don't get spoiled for Wano. We're so close to being caught up to One Piece. But yes, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time. <laughs>